What is up guys, Chris Sheldon here, back at it again. This time at the Spring Classic for 2022, put on by the Fayetteville Wheelman. This race is in Prairie Grove, Arkansas, so just southwest of Fayetteville in some wonderful backcountry um, with some awesome roads to race on. This is my first road race coming off of two crits in the past weekend at Gamblers. Um, important notes here, we've got two big teams and then of course this being a Cat 5 race, we've got a lot of teamless riders. We've got Brick Squad from Tulsa, they've got four riders, three of them in red, one of them in a white and purple jersey, and then my team, the Fayetteville Wilman. You've got Nate Hemby, Joey Acuff, Shannon Storm, and Ryan Withens all with me today. Um, Prairie Grove course, as you can see on the top right, it's a standard lollipop. It's actually around 24 miles with a three mile neutral lead out on the way out. That's what that Jeep is doing for us. And as you can already see, no one is going to want to be on the front today. We're doing zero watts. We're making it, keeping it easy. And that's how you're going to see the rest of this race go. But before we jump into the actual race itself, we want to go over the quick course features. First of all, this course only has two big features. One is the Lake Weddington blacktop and its climb at the very end. So that is the uh, basically the north section of the course. Um, you get onto this really fast rolling hills blacktop that ends on a really short punchy climb. That can be a separator if you're doing a group ride, so definitely something to watch out for. And then second is Weaver Hill. Fairly infamous if you ride in the Prairie Grove area. Weaver Hill is about half a kilometer, about, about 9%. Takes about a minute to get up there. Um, and if you're with a group, it can easily be an extremely hard effort and likely where in this short of a race, you're gonna see the break. And then lastly, what's important to note is that the finish is a straight uphill drag. No technical corners, nothing like that. You're on, we're on that road that you can see right now. Um, when you take it back up, it's about a 1% to 3% gray with a little puncher at the end, and then about 75 meters to the finish. So very, very long sprint, and so if you don't have a good lead out, you're definitely going to get punished. Uh, my team's objectives. Um, first of all, we got punished for this last week, and so we definitely want to spend as little time on the front as possible. We're looking to be lazy, not work at all, but still control the race and stay active near the front. Second is we want to control any breaks, but we largely don't want to match them unless they look threatening. Um, overall, our team last time kind of let some breaks go, and so this time we're really looking with this longer course and Weaver Hill. We're really not looking to um, try and match any solo riders. It's really hard to not get clawed back as a breakaway in this kind of course unless you do it at Weaver Hill. So we're looking to control those, kind of threat assess those, and let the ones that aren't that threatening go, um, and then for that. And then lastly, we want to keep the race together for a bunch sprint. Um, our goal here is just to see how we can sprint and really bring it to that end. And so we're going to uh, following those two up previous points. That's our overall strategy. And this is where the first actual move begins. So you see Brick Squad coming up and you got my two teammates on the right. We've got our kind of pace line moving up. This is where one of the first moves of the race really happens. They just for no real reason decided to kick it up. Um, I get kicked out of my wheel and I'm forced to kind of ride outside. I now take it from this guy to my right. You can't see it, but I slot in and they are absolutely drilling it at the front. I'm doing 600, almost 700 watts trying to get back onto his wheel. But they launch this and luckily they're not too familiar with the race, but um, up ahead is one, one of the many death bridges that Weddington in this area has. Um, this one has launched many a rider off of it through all those holes, which you can see marked in the yellow. And so that kind of slows everybody down as they take a second to not crash. And pretty easily we bring it back together. Um, but you'll see in just a couple of seconds uh, where what really happens. And so as we're speeding it up, moving through this, kind of just pedaling along, like I said, uh, keeping it easy again, all of a sudden. Hey, get up the front. Get the fuck up the front. As you can hear me saying to my teammate, get off the front. Like I said, our plan was to sit on the front as little as possible. And Nate being um, not one of our stronger riders, wanted to make sure we protected his energy as much as possible. At this point, since we just put in that serious dig, I'm looking for us to be able to chase down that little break, just so that we've now lost sight of them. And so it's a good time for us to find them. Hey boys, let's get this front straight. We gotta bring those two back. And almost on cue, as I ask for us to start rotating, our friend in Brick Squad launches it again. And as you can see, it begins a pretty vicious attack, kicking it up to, you know, five, 600 watts as he's going. And me and Ryan begin the chase. Um, honestly, I was a little unprepared for it. I, I didn't think we would be going hard this early into the race. Um, but you can see pretty early on, Ryan latches on, and then I'm able to do it once again, also latch onto him. Um, 
I thought we were slowing down. He kicked it back up, and I was I'm a little too far off the wheel at this point. But like I said, we latch onto the wheel, and at this point, we're sitting pretty. Um, he's going straight into a headwind. The wind was coming pretty westward at this point today. Um, and so he's just getting absolutely smacked in the face, putting in a lot more watts than we are um, for this same work. And so we're just chilling. We're happy. Like I said, we thought this brake looked a little threatening, that we could, that there was some possible threat. Um, we knew this is how they managed to get on the podium last week, and so knew we wanted to make sure that he didn't get to go for free, and that we capitalized on that work as well. And you can see that the hitting just doesn't stop. That right as you get to the point where you think he's going to ease up, you see him stand up out of the saddle, really start to launch it. Like I said, we're not even to the first corner of this race and we're already kicking it back up to 600 watts. He's going right, now he's going left, now he's going right again. Uh, really trying to make something stick here. Um, and you can't see it from my camera, but actually in the back half of the field, this is apparently a pretty severe break. The field's been snapped in about half at this point and there's now 10 riders up with us and there are about 10 riders behind us. This is a field of around 25 and so that little dig, while it didn't affect the wheelman at all, um, was a pretty impactful one for the overall field. Even though we do get brought back, we are happy to sit in and keep the field together overall. All right, and now we've made it to the north end of the course. Nothing happened in the past 10 miles. We're just now turning right onto Weddington Blacktop. And you watch me get launched into the center of the road and almost get hit by an oncoming car because somebody who was being a little Cat 5 decided to dive the inside as I was turning. So forced to do a big little effort to make up for that little um, stupid little move. Unsure why he would have possibly dove there, but he did. Either way, it doesn't affect the race. I catch up pretty quickly. And now you can see uh, why Weddington Blacktop can be such an exciting part of the race. Already we're back up to 34 miles an hour. Doesn't require much power because of these rolling hills. You get a lot of free momentum. Um, unfortunately, there was a lot of pulling brakes. If you're watching this clip and you're kind of watching it go through, once we get off of these hills, you'll see most of the time on this section, I'm pulling brake more than I'm actually pedaling, which can be pretty frustrating and honestly a little dangerous as, as well. Wasn't particularly happy with how we were riding a lot of this. Um, you see me flipping out to the outside, hoping to catch onto this rider's wheel, but he immediately stops pedaling and now we're done. And guys, I just decided to tuck it and kind of go. I'm barely pedaling at this point and I'm rolling. And you can see how little power it actually takes to generate some momentum on this. And I'm just trying to test the field, see what's going on. I have no plans of actually getting up. Um, but like I said, Weddington doesn't get exciting until we get to its hill. So we're gonna fast forward to there. And welcome to the little Weddington Puncher that really isn't actually a hill. And probably for any of you who live in hillier areas than Northwest Arkansas, you know that this does not qualify as a climb. But it's one just nice punchy effort. As you can see, we already kick it up to 600, 500 watts. We're going now um, just to keep up. But like I said, staying in the draft definitely matters here at 16 miles an hour. We're not, we're definitely going up this thing pretty quick um, and definitely using a big little stint of power. But you can, you can see really quickly, um, the overall playing field levels out. Um, and even as we're heading directly into the sun, apologies for that, you can see that we're keeping it, trying to keep it consistent, stay on the wheel. And you can see the guy in front of me, this brick squad rider is really eyeing making a move. He's sitting out in the wind for some reason. I take the wheel from him. Um, and as you can see, he kind of moves up and I'm looking, I'm thinking. And really at this point, the, ne the next thing that's gonna happen in this race is Weaver Hill. And so he looks back, he goes ahead, he looks back again, we're not following. And this is probably the smartest thing we do as a Cat 5 the whole race, is we just let his butt go. Um, there's absolutely no reason to chase this back at this point. He's not threatening. He's proven to us before that he's a punchy rider. He's not going to go solo TT away from us the rest of this race. And even if just Ryan and I have to bring him back, we absolutely can. We're not worried about that at all. And if he's going to do all that work getting to Weaver Hill by himself, he's going to be strung out, weak. And by the time the pack gets there, he's just not going to have what he needs to get that done. Right, and now we've finally arrived at the coming up to Weaver Hill. You can begin, even on a GoPro, to see the incline begin to kick up. And you can see especially the pack is now swarming. Whereas in the past, the uh, rest of this race, you've seen it mostly be, you know, one person on the front, one peloton, or one line for the peloton. You've now got a huge group. My goal here is just to sit in, draft wheels, and try to move as quickly as possible. Um, easily catch up to this uh, little brick squad rider right here feeling good this is where it really starts to kick up when you hit that basically straight nine percent that whole time um, this brick squad rider in front of me showed me that he was pretty strong and so i knew i wanted to kind of follow him on my way up um, but one of the things that i missed is you'll see that guy in the blue and yellow 
that Bex rider up there, he manages to kind of launch it off the front. And honestly, I wasn't paying too much attention. And so as I'm kind of moving my way through the pack, catching up, these guys are all of a sudden 10, 20, 30. I think they might finish the hill 30 yards ahead of us. And so I'm sitting in pretty easy. 400 watts for that long is not that not too hard for me. And all of a sudden, we're way up here. Guy on my right drops his chain. We lose that, and now I'm hopping on this guy's wheel. Um, the big thing that our coach was telling us, you have to keep power on the pedals as you crest Weaver. Everyone is going to sit up. Everyone's going to take it easy the second you get up Weaver. And so all I was thinking in my head was keep power on the pedals. Just you know, sit in, rest, but you've got it. You've got to keep power on the pedals. And at this point, if you look up, I mean, these guys are maybe 50, 60, 70, maybe even 100 yards ahead of us now at this point. They have really gapped the field without even a chance to really respond. And so felt a little sloppy letting that go. Certainly wasn't the intention. But having ridden this route with group rides all the time, if you're breaking away at the top of Weaver, it's still a long ways from the finish. And so at this point, I'm feeling pretty good that we can find a group together uh, and bring this back. Now, as we speed this up, you can see I'm favoring the right side of this young junior rider from OZ Dev. And this is what ends up being my downfall. As I'm trying to convince these guys, you hear me yelling, Ale, Ale, trying to get them to pick up the speed. I'm really half wheeling this guy on the inside. And right on time, right as I'm you know, shifting back, you see Brick Squad. He's right about to launch it up the left side. Boom, boom, boom. And you can see that punchy rider who we brought back from the breakaway has now launched it again, trying to send it to catch that front group. And I see this as a pretty strong opportunity um, to bring him back and make a two-man effort to bridge the breakaway and make it a five-man sprint for the end. However, this dude's a little heavier than I am, and so I have a lot of trouble catching up to him on this downhill. Honestly, I was pretty, uh, I was feeling it. These pedal strokes felt pretty heavy. And so even though I'm giving my heart out here, I still am unable to bring him back. After I fail to bridge across, you see this rider sweep by on the left, and you'll see what he says. He says, get behind me, I'll pull you and my son. And so you'll see we now hop. Ryan and I are now in a four-man group with um, this guy and his son. He gives an awesome hero effort to bridge us back and finally brings us back all the way um, back to the breakaway group up the road. Um, learned later from the Bex rider who ends up winning this race that the Brick Squad rider, true to their name, decided that he wasn't going to pull in this group. And so the reason this break gets brought back is because of that rider. Otherwise, they probably would have stayed away even with that hero effort. So now we're finally lining up for the sprint at the end. Um, I want to note one huge thing here is that the, ro the road opens up to the left, not to the right. And so Ryan and I here have taken the wrong side of the road, and you're going to watch it cost us this race. As, w as we come to sprint at the end of the race, I'm going to get trapped on the right side. I'm going to have to make a sketchy move into the gutter to get around. But as you can see, we're already picking it up 22, 23. Like I said, this is like a 1, 1.5% 1 grade. So it's a pretty... Um, nice false flat that we're hitting but overall third wheel if I could just switch places with the brick squad rider to my left I would be in the best position I could possibly want to be in um, the other thing that's going to be the downfall of us is that the rider that Ryan is drafting right now ends up not really kicking I think he kind of burns it all right on this little puncher hill that we're now hitting um, and he doesn't really have anything left after that unfortunately and so you can see as we start to go, I kind of have to fling out to Ryan's right, um, and this Brickstore wire kind of pushes me over to the right. Ryan comes back, and the only place I have to go is this right side, and so I move around him. My wheels are kind of hitting the gutter a little bit. You can see that I force myself around him, right by brushing shoulders with him, and now I'm sitting out on the far right side, almost a thousand watts. Don't crack it this time, just a little tired. And this Bex dude just has a massive sprint. He does this for maybe 20, 25 seconds. And I'm a little bit of a dumbass here. I don't get behind the Brick Squad rider and try and come around him. I'm sitting out in the wind. Um, I did sprint for third, so an overall good result, but definitely a really sloppy lead out, really sloppy sprint. Went way too early, definitely could have done a lot better. But congratulations to the Beck Squad rider who won, uh, Brick Squad who got second, and of course our, our wheelman came in third place with that last little sprint. Great little race. Thanks to the Fave Woman. Thanks to Lewis for sponsoring our team. Much appreciated, guys. Peace.